Hello, I'm Jesse. I'm the creator of Lazy Git, and um, recently I've been alerted to the fact that I do a very bad job of communicating features in this program. I've got a bad habit of making a feature, telling no one about it, and then using it all to myself. Um, so this video is my attempt to just rally up a bunch of cool features that you might find useful. Um, so I'm going to try and get through 15 cool Lazy Git features in under 15 minutes. Let's go. All right, first step. Um, the first thing is staging files quickly. So if I open up lazy git here, actually, let's just quickly check what's my git status giving me. Okay, so I've got four modified files. Well, let's say I open up lazy git. Um, if I want to stage these, I just go to each of these, just moving using my arrow keys, and I just hit space on them. And they're now all staged. And I can go commit my commit. Um, I'll just reset back to this guy. I could alternatively just press A here and I'll just toggle all of them at once. So if I've got a few here, I can just toggle it. Um, my random commit. Okay. Um, second thing is, well, let's see. We can also stage individual lines. So if I press enter on one of these guys as opposed to space, I can now go down here and every time I press space, it will add the line to my index. So maybe I only want to commit, you know, this chunk of stuff first. I'm going to commit blah. And sure enough, there it is. And I can now go and commit the rest of the things. I can use a V to start a range, then hit space again to apply that. Um, I can press tab over here and I can go in and press D to unstage some things. Um, I can also go back here and press D and it will just delete the line itself. Um, so, okay, let's just commit this again. I'm gonna go blah, blah. Um, so I've got two commits here. So now the third feature that I wanted to show is cherry picking. So. I can um, go C on one of these guys and press C for as many as I want um, and it will cherry pick them. So now if I come over to my random branch 2 over here, um, if I want to paste them, I just press V and yes, I want to move them across and there they are, done. Um, okay, so what's the third thing I want to do? Well, so let's say we didn't uh, apply those things, bring them back here. If I wanted to get rid of all this stuff, it's actually quite easy. I would just go shift, well, first of all, you can get rid of a file by just pressing D, just saying discard all changes. Um, it doesn't delete the file, it will just remove whatever things were kind of, you know, changed in the working tree. Um, but if I go shift D, I've got more options here. I can do a hard reset, soft reset. Um, and the one that I often find myself doing is just nuking the working tree because often you're gonna have a bunch of files in your git status and you just don't care about any of them. You wanna blow them all away. This is the command that will do that for you. And they're gone. Um, okay, so what else here? Um, interactive rebasing. Um, so sometimes you want to go and make some changes to things. Um, uh, a few commits back. So typically you might go in the command line and do like an interactive rebase. Um, but what I'm going to do is instead go to my commits panel here and you just navigate through these guys using the left and right arrow keys. And I'm going to press E. And now I've just started an interactive rebase. So uh, these commits here are kind of set to be picked. Um, and you can change what the actual command is by, you know, if it's edit, press E. If it's squash, press S. Fix up, press F. Uh, there's pick, drop. You can't do a reword. Um, you can do it just in a in a like non-interactive rebase context, but we haven't got that feature yet. Um, but let's say we're just picking all of these, and well, maybe we'll squash these guys together. I'll squash this guy into this guy, um, and I can now press M to bring up my rebase options. I'm just going to go continue. There you go, squashed. So that's pretty cool. Um, what else can I do here? You can also move things around. So if you're in this state, you can go Control J and K, and you can kind of swap things. Um, so it's useful for reordering stuff. Um, I'm just going to abort that rebase now. And okay, so that's interactive rebasing. Another cool thing is um, you can amend things. So let's say that this commit wasn't here, and I wanted to add this to this commit because it kind of belongs more so than it belongs to this commit or a new commit. I can go to this guy and press shift A and then I can say that I want to amend it. Um, and there you go, now it's there. Um, so, and by the way, just there I'm clicking enter or pressing enter to view the actual files of the commit. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. Um, you can also do fix up things. So um, maybe I want to, um, 
let's say that I didn't have this guy here, maybe I want to do fix up this commit um, as opposed to directly amending it because I don't want to have to go and force push things if I'm in the middle of like a, a pull request that people are reviewing. You can press, is it F? Fix up commit, fix up commit, create a fix up commit for this commit. Yeah, so I'm going to go Shift F and enter. And now we've got a commit here that's going to fix up this guy. So now if I go to here, maybe I think maybe here, uh, and I go, there's the one that makes you then go and squash everything up. Um, squash above commits. Okay, so if I go Shift F, shift, sorry, Shift S here. I assume you want to squash or fix up commits above. Yes, done. So now that little change there lives in the commit that was trying to fix up in the first place. That's good. Um, what else have we got here? Um, we can open pull requests in a single key press. So here if I go, um, oh, ooh, I need to push first. That's just shift P to push and you use regular P to pull. Um, so open pull request. And that has opened that in uh, my uh, browser over here, but let me just drag it in here and you can see, there you go, random branch, and you can just create it like that. Okay, so what else have we got here? Um, amending and fixing up commits, I can revert a commit quite easily. Let's say that I, I regret the fact that I put this in, but maybe it's on master, so the best I can do is just revert it. If you press T, there you go, just reverts it. And like all these things are just in this menu here, if you press X, or I think even question mark, nope, just X, um, you can scroll down and see what the actual options are. Um, what else have we got? Um, there's, oh, you can, okay, here's, here's a cool thing. Sometimes you only want to stash some things, but not everything. Um, so let's say that was here, and maybe I want to stash this go release a thing, but not these other two guys. If I stage this by pressing space, and then I go shift, oh, well, first of all, regular stashing, just press S, but if you go shift S, you can select to stash only the cha uh, stage changes. So I press enter on this, and I'm just going to call this blah, um, there you go, down here, um, we've only stashed that one file, so quite useful if you only have certain things you want to stash as opposed to other things. Um, what else have we got? There's some pretty cool stuff you can do with, um, uh, playing with things, um, in old commits. So, uh, I'll go into my little test repo here as an example of that, and see if this guy is kind of configured correctly. Uh, this guy? Yep. Okay, so I've noticed here I've got a grocery list, I've got some junk food in one commit and then a dairy in another commit. And the junk food has this milk in it. Uh, it's just like a, an example where I'm building a grocery list and each commit is kind of somewhat logically separated. Uh, here I've got milk uh, at the bottom of my junk food uh, commit, but it doesn't really belong. It belongs more so in the dairy commit. What I can do is press enter here to view the commit files again, press enter again, and then I can scroll down here using my arrow key, select milk, which will add it to this custom patch on the right. If I hit escape a couple times and go back to my dairy commit, I can then go control P and um, move the patch to the selected commit. So that, there you go. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, another example is you can delete stuff from an old commit, maybe you put like a binding prior or a console log that you didn't uh, want to have there. Um, in this case, we've got uh, a commit that's kind of more recent that swaps out cola for lemonade. If we wanted to go back here and remove cola, um, let's just say remove patch from regional commit, um, it's going to do an interactive rebase behind the scenes and when it gets up to that more recent commit that tries to swap it out for lemonade, it's going to go, hang on a second, we've deleted cola in one place, we've replaced it for lemonade in another place, what do you want to do? Um, and that's going to cause a merge conflict. So I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to deal with those. And here we've got our grocery list, and I love lemonade, so I'm going to choose lemonade. Done. And now if we go back here, um, yeah, we've got lemonade, and we have no cola in the junk food commit. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, what else can I show you here? Uh, easily rebasing onto Origin Master. So let me have a look. Let's go back to my lazy docker. Um, Gonna get rid of these two guys. I wonder if this is gonna work. I mean, it might not. If I, I'm gonna fetch master, which will kind of get it up to date with Origin Master. I'm gonna press R here. I'm gonna rebase onto it. And oh, I've got conflicts. That's okay because I did make some changes. So let's just pick both of them. Um, you press B to select both things in the uh, merge conflict. 
continue done so yeah very easy way of just um, getting rebates on the uh, origin master um, you just press F to fetch it to the latest one and then press R to rebase onto it um, what else have we got um, there's a couple more things there's checking out without needing to stash changes but I'm wondering if that's even possible for me to do here um, let's say I make a well, let's see if I soft reset this guy and try and come over here okay so sometimes when you want to switch branches it complains because it's saying that there could be merge conflicts maybe if you swap over but in lazy git you don't need to go and stash things and unstash them on the other end it'll just say do you want me to do this for you um so in this case yes do it automatically and there you go in this case luckily i didn't even have merge conflicts so it's one of those situations where it's like how good is that like you know some so often it'll give you that error message um and you've got to go and stash and unstash things when there's not even going to be a merge conflict um if there is a merge conflict that's fine you just got to work it out in your actual working tree here um but that's pretty cool. And what else have we got? There was one or two more things. Um, uh, I did have changing the color theme. Um, that's pretty cool. I wonder if I even have a change color theme in my regular console. Let's go in here. Uh, oop. Okay. Um, okay, active border color, currently green and bold. Inactive is black. Let's change it to yellow and red. This is obviously nothing to do with Git, but I think it's just really cool because um, it's fun playing around with these things. Let's go back in here. And whoa, that's not really yellow. It's kind of weird. Um, oh, yellow. Try this again. Boom. How cool is this? I feel like I'm playing Command and Keen again. And we're done. Those are 15 features. So I think I made good time. I think I'm less than 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, hopefully you learned a thing or two, maybe, um, some of this stuff is something that you could use in your own day-to-day -day life. Um, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, otherwise, till next time.